It's time for the Financial Crisis Talk Center with Ken Gross and David Einstandig from Fav Gross. Credit card debt is number one. I think, it, I view it as financial cancer. 40% of your gross income is going to just pay the debt service. You got no chance of getting out. I would give up my credit score to get rid of debt. Here's your host, Ken Gross. Uh, it's Financial Crisis Talk Center time. We're talking about tax problems. This is the second segment of a two-part series on how to resolve tax problems. In the previous segment, we did some truth or fiction, and we started talking about what your options are with regard to tax problems. I've got Brian Small with me from Thaf Gross, our bankruptcy expert. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Ken. I'm sure you're still with us. Jenny Lingle is our tax expert. She's been walking us through the steps Jenny, we're going to continue on with this project. Alfreda, you're our sidekick, making sure that you understand. I hope you're paying your taxes timely. <laughs> but if you're not, this is exactly where you can find out what, what you need to do. <laughs> come in for a consultation. All right. when, we, when we last broke, we were, on, we were talking about installment agreements from the standpoint of what your options are. If you're under 25000 you can get an automated installment payment. Uh, it's over 72 months. Under 50, you can do the same. Uh, what's the difference between the 50 and 25, Jenny? The only difference is that uh, if it's under, if it's over, between 25 and 50, you have to do it by direct debit. Okay. Now, if you don't, if you can't afford the payment over the 72 months, or if you owe more than 50,000, <laughs> then you have to do an installment payment by through a negotiation process. Uh. That's correct. Basically, you have to look at the income and the allowable expenses in order to determine what the monthly payment is going to be. And that's what we were just talking about, was the allowable expenses. We were all incensed over the fact that they're national standards determined by basically a chart, and you get what you're allocated based upon the county that you reside in. You know, but and even though they may be unfair, they are what they are. Those national standards, though, quite often actually play into being a benefit rather than being a burden, at least in the world of bankruptcy, by comparison. Because we use the same standards for tax and bankruptcy, but we get the entire expense that's allowed in bankruptcy versus the actual expense that's allowed by the IRS or... Yeah, so, so in that sense, it's a, be that sense it's a benefit. All right, let's, we're, sneaking back to uh, taxes... What's this concept currently not collectible? That's another thing. Can you be – listen, I would like to be deemed currently not collectible. Is that possible? And if I, if I get that determination, it means I don't have to pay the taxes that I owe? No. Currently not collectible means that they look at your current income and your current allowable expenses, and they decide that you can't afford to make any payment at that time. Uh, they would also look at any liquid assets that you might have. The liability remains. They just agree not to collect against you uh, for a couple of so years. So listen, I, I have I have income, but I've got a lot of expenses. I've got you know things that I got to pay for. I got bills. I got cars. I've got you know friends that need money. My money's not readily available. It's all stashed in cigar boxes, spread out throughout who knows where. Is, do, am I eligible? Is that, does that qualify me for CNC? Probably not, but we'd have to go through <laughs> Maybe what? CNN or something right. like that, but not CNC. We'd have to go through the analysis. A lot of times when you're CNC... Or maybe like, see you later, buddy, because you're going to jail. <laughs> The, the plan with CNC a lot of times is there may be a reason why you do not qualify for an offer and compromise, so we're not looking at that. Or sometimes it's because the, the taxes are going to be dischargeable possibly in a Chapter 7 down the road, and we're just setting you up as not collectible so that we can get to the time period when you can discharge those in bankruptcy. How, how long can the IRS collect from you if you've timely filed your taxes but you just don't owe the money? They have 10 years from the date of assessment unless you filed an offer and compromise for a collection due process hearing or a bankruptcy. Those things would extend Extends that statute. Right Write down those words, collection due process hearing. What is that about? Uh, basically... When do we use that? Th these, this is one of the things that I tell clients why, number one, you get your mail. Number two, why you address it right away because initially they'll send you some reminders, notices, and urgent notice, and then they'll send you what they call a final notice or it'll say call immediately you have a right to a collection due process hearing you only get one shot at it and you have to file for that hearing within 30 days what happens when you file that hearing is all collection action goes on hold I like that yes and at that point then they'll assign an appeals officer or a settlement officer to handle your case can you get a nice one 
most of them are pre- pretty nice, I, I would say. I would the, ma- the majority of them. <laughs> what you if have... you don't like yours, can you get a new one? <sighs> kind of like a dog? <laughs> In certain circumstances. Not, uh, no analogy there for all our IRS agent friends that are I would say the for the most of them, they're, they're reasonable. The, the benefit is, is if you do not have a person assigned to your case and you're dealing with the 800 number, you're dealing with a customer service rep who can only take your information over the phone. As soon as you hang up, if they need anything additional, you call in, you talk to somebody else. They need something no additional, report. they hang up, you, got, yeah. you have to call back. Um, also, through the collection due process hearing, there are certain things that are discretionary provisions that the appeals officers and the settlement officers have the authority to grant. So that's... Uh, and I've had I've had experience mm-hmm. use in, with with appeals officers and collection due process hearings as well, and I found that that's a, a, a tremendous benefit. You can talk to the person, you can reason with the person, and they have they don't have the authority to say you don't have to pay the tax, but they have a range of discretion and authority that the people in the automated process do not have, and you can get things accomplished. Right. An example of that would be <clears throat> if you owed over $50,000 and your your plan that you were proposing would full pay the liability in five years. However, their numbers crunch so that your payment should be $500 more a month based on your income. Uh, the appeals officer can look at it and say, you know what, since it's still going to pay the liability in full, we'll allow you to have these other discretionary expenses. Oh, that's a good one. And Brian, and then the last one before we get to our case study, is bankruptcy. How does that work? You Listen, I can get I thought that you can't file bankruptcy to get rid of your taxes. What's the story there? Uh, give me the rule and then we're going to go on to our case right. study. Rule number 1 is is that all income taxes can be discharged in bankruptcy if they're old enough. So, as long as a tax came due more than 3 years ago, has been filed for at least 2 years and hasn't been assessed in the last 240 days, it is generally dischargeable with about 85 different exceptions. My, but, they're, <laughs> you, but, but they're not major exceptions. They usually don't apply, correct? They usually don't apply except for the big one, which is a substitute for return. What happens a lot of time is, is that the IRS will file a tax return on behalf of the taxpayer, and that tax return, if you go ahead and try and correct it later on down the road, is never dischargeable in bankruptcy. That is why so you need it is to file your so own. So imperative to file the tax. Returns. You got to file your. And that means filing your own return, signing your own return, and filing it. You can't when the government files the return for you. That won't work. That's what you're saying. Absolutely, it's an important point. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to go through the case study of Brian and Anna. Now, Jenny was Brian. Brian Small next to you, or is Brian fictional? <laughs> he must have just been in my mind when I was writing the case study. <laughs> so it's not Brian Small. We're going to talk about Brian and Anna and how they go about getting an offer and compromise right after the break. I couldn't get out of the car. I couldn't run or exercise. I couldn't work. Dr. Lewis Radden believes that pain shouldn't have to wait. His Spine Specialist of Michigan is a comprehensive center dedicated to helping you manage pain now. Expect the latest techniques and personalized care. Why suffer another minute? He's the best. I tell people that he's the one that saved my life. Make your appointment with Dr. Radden. Call 248-792-9496. If your house is underwater, please listen to this important message. The rules have finally changed. We're seeing some great loan modifications with reduced principal, and short sales are easier to get done than people think. The biggest problems I see are people wait too long or they try and do it themselves. There are no second chances. If you're underwater in your house, call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. No one ever thinks that a serious injury can happen to them. But it can and it does. And it can happen to you. And when it does, you need a fighter in that courtroom for you. Call me. Ben Johnson, automobile accident, police misconduct, medical malpractice, product liability. You know what you're up against, how hard it is to get answers. When all you want is justice, call me, Ben Johnson. Whatever your legal crisis, I will fight for you. Call me today. Do you have tax problems, unfiled returns, facing levies on wages in your property? You need an expert, not a cartoon character or salesman. Thav Gross is your solution. You need to look at the big picture. That's what we do. We develop a plan that's right for you. I had major tax problems. I didn't know what to do. We did. 
We sat down together and solved your tax problem. No more letters, no more phone calls. They saved me. Call Thav Gross, 888-235-HELP. Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. All right, welcome back. We're going to do a case study on how to, and it's going to teach you and show you what the elements of an offer and compromise are. There's a lot of fiction out there. You watch a TV commercial on set, or on cable or on satellite radio, and they make it sound like automatically you can pay off your taxes and pay 10% of what you owe, and it's a simple process that they have magic dust that they throw on it. It's a process, and Jenny's provided us the information that we need. It's a, a process that you have to go through, and there's numbers that are involved, and there's rules that have to be followed, and you can analyze whether you can qualify and have a benefit to be obtained from an offer and compromise. If you don't qualify, it's not an option for you. You have to come up with a different strategy. So we're going to walk you through it. Uh, it's based on the assets that you have. It's the income you're earning. If it's accepted and they come up with a number that you make the offer, you have five months from the date of the acceptance to make the payment. Something you need to know is if you get an offer and compromise approved, IRS then monitors your tax returns for five years to make sure you filed your returns and paid your taxes. And if you fail to do either one of them, they have the right to rescind the agreement, which means you still owe the taxes that you were you you, you got compromised. So it's a so it's 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 not that simple of a process. You can't just step in and get it. You got to then be in compliance for five years. Many tax expert firms that you see on the TV swindle people into paying them money saying, I can get you an offer and compromise when they can't. The right way to handle this is you go into somebody like Jenny Lingle at our office and you have an analysis done of your problem and we decide whether a tax uh, offer and compromise is a viable alternative. And if you do qualify, then we'll pursue it. But we're not going to charge you an arm and a leg saying that you automatically can do an offer and compromise and then submit something that's going to be denied. If you don't meet the parameters, it will be denied. Denied. It's not, it's not like, well, Jenny's really a sweet person and she can talk the IRS into accepting an offer that doesn't meet the criteria. For the most part, I tell people it's like preparing a tax return. It's not a negotiation. The numbers really have to work at the end of the day. There's a little bit of manipulation that can be done, but not much. Okay, now let's get to the case study. We got Brian and Anna. They owe IRS 75000 bucks from 207 and 208. It's been lingering over them for a long time, a lot of anxiety. They've come in to see Jenny, and we're making an analysis. Will they qualify for an offer and compromise? Here are their facts. They make good income. They've got $100,000 annual gross income. Their net income per month is $6,000 a month. Now, I'm going to run through their assets, and I realize if you're listening to the show, it's going to be difficult to get all the numbers down. But if you're interested in this, this show is going to air on, the case study is going to air on August 25th. So go to your DVR, set Financial Crisis Talk Center. It's Sundays at 1030 on Channel 20, and, and record the show. Then you can run through the numbers, it's, and the numbers tell the story when it comes to an offer and compromise. Here's their assets. They got cash in bank, not much, 950 bucks. Their 401k after taxes is $4,500. So it's really about $6,000 in their 401k. If they took the money out, they'd have $4,500. Car number one, fair market value, $8,000. Car number two, fair market value, $12,000. They owe on car number one, $7,200. So they have $800 of equity in car number one. They owe on car number two, 14000 so they're 2000 underwater on their car. Can you be underwater on a car, Brian? I guess you can. Yeah, definitely. Of course you're, you can you're be under, on our car. No, you're under the road, whatever. <laughs> under the road. Uh, fair market value of your pavement. house. 
Under fair, fair market value, their house is 350000 Their mortgage is 325000 So those are the facts. Now, what do you need to do? You have to find out how much the offer must be. It's not like they'll go, hey, I'll offer you uh, $4,000. Let's call it a square deal. That's my offer, baby. <laughs> you know, Ken, it doesn't while, work that way. While, while we're figuring out what the offer will be, we're also examining whether or not these people qualify for a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. And in this situation, they would pay more, and Ginny will tell us why, in a Chapter 13 than they will in an offer and compromise. Absolutely good point. Let's, let's keep going. Now, how do you determine the amount of the offer? There's two steps. You have to calculate the asset value, and then you have to add it to the income less allowable expenses multiplied by 12, and that equals the amount of the offer. Now, how do you calculate the assets? We've got rules. On the home, this is the rule. You multiply the fair market value of the home times 80% and subtract the mortgage. If that number is negative, then the asset value of the house is zero. If that number is positive, that's the asset value, and that's going to be part of the offer you have to make. On cash, they're really gracious on cash. You're allowed $1,000. But in this case, in Brian and Anna only have 950, so they have no cash as far as the offer goes. And by the way, on the house calculation, 350,000 times 80 percent is 280,000. The mortgage is 325. So for purposes of the offer, the value of the house is zero. The vehicle rule is you could exempt 3,450 dollars per vehicle. Well, Brian and Anna have $800 in equity in one car. They're under the road on the other car. So, therefore, the cars have zero value. This is good. We want zeros. Zeros is good. Remember the movie Dave. This is good when he's trying to save the $600 million off the budget. 401K and IRAs. The rule there is you have to include the after-tax value of the retirement account. So, if you're sitting on $300,000 in your IRA, 401K, Forget about an offer and compromise unless you owe the government $30 million. Uh, you know, the, the IRA is going to, and the 401k is going to go to there. So in this case, 4500 is included in an asset. So now let's add up our numbers in terms of what the assets are. House, zero. Cash, zero. Vehicle, zero. 401k, $4,500. Total assets are $4,500. Now, after we come back to the break, we're going to do the second component, which is going to be to calculate the income. We'll be back after the break. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Every family has the family meeting. and We all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person and say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Financially strapped? Do you want to save your home? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt but you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Double action. Shooting center and gun shop. For the largest selection of guns, accessories, and ammunition. Double action is your only pro gun shop. And now you can train with the best in our basic CCW course. With the most comprehensive curriculum, the best resources, and most accomplished staff. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. Double action is the only place to get your CCW or renewal. Double action. We're on DeQuinder and Madison Heights. Carrying too much debt? Dump your debt. 
Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. No one ever thinks that a serious injury can happen to them, but it can and it does. And it can happen to you. And when it does, you need a fighter in that courtroom for you. Call me, Ben Johnson. Automobile accident, police misconduct, medical malpractice, product liability. You know what you're up against, how hard it is to get answers. When all you want is justice, call me, Ben Johnson. Whatever your legal crisis, I will fight for you. Call me today. All right, welcome back. We're walking through an example on a case study of a offer and compromise for fictitious taxpayers named Brian and Anna. Before we go right back to it, I want to thank our sponsors, Ven Johnson Law, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, Double Action Shooting Range and Gun Shop, Spine Specialists in Michigan. We really appreciate the support. I also want to remind everyone, we actually have our first fall seminar coming up. That is on Tuesday, September 17th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. It is called Resolving Your Finances. It's going to cover all financial crisis issues plus estate planning issues because the two intermingle together, and we want to create greater emphasis on some estate planning issues. If you want to sign up, go to thavgross.com or financialcrisistalkcenter.com or do it the old-fashioned way. Just call 888-235-HELP. All right, now back, back to uh, Brian and Anna. Before we went to the break, we said the offer amount has to be a combination of the required asset amount plus the income factor. The income factor is you take their net income per month less their allowable expenses, and then you have to multiply that number by 12, and then you add that number to the asset number, and that equals your offer. So in Brian and Anna's case, I'll summarize for you their expenses. Their total monthly expenses that they're actually incurring are running $59.94 per month, and that's $12.34 for food and clothing, $2,500 housing, their car payments, their medical insurance. The total there is $5,994. If you were looking at this on the screen, you would see the itemization. The amount that IRS will allow under their standards in their particular case is a little bit less. It's $5,596 because their housing and utility cost is actually $2,500 a month, but under those national standards in Oakland County, they're only allowed $2,102 per month for that particular item. So the end result is, on the analysis, the total allowed expenses is $5,596. The net income is 6000 a month. Therefore, their income factor, the income factor, is $404 per month. You multiply that times 12, and that equals $4,848. You now take the sum of the income factor, 4848 You add it to the total assets that we calculated at 4500 That totals $9,348. This is the amount that the offer must be. Jenny, if we offer $5,000, what will happen? Now the offer will get rejected. <clears throat> they will come back uh, and do these calculations and put them for you on a similar spreadsheet and come back and say you can afford to pay likely $9,348. So when we come, if you came into the office and met with Jenny and it was analyzed, we determined that nine th if... 9348 is what it's going to be. And then the question is, can you afford to pay it? Can you come up with the $9,348 within? Five months. Five months. The date of acceptance. You're going to have to borrow the money. You're going to have to make arrangements to have that money. Is it a good deal? Absolutely. You're, you're getting rid of a $75,000 tax liability for 9348 Brian, now switch back to you because you would then, we'd also analyze, could we do better in a Chapter 13 to get rid of the tax with liability. These factors, with, with these factors, you've got a situation where you're going to pay less in a chapter in an offer and compromise than you would in a Chapter 13 because that $404 is the same number we would approximately come up with in a Chapter 13 situation, 
but it would be for 60 months. If you paid it for 60 months, would the balance of the taxes be discharged? They would be, but let me show you how Chapter 13 would work. Flip the $4,500 IR, uh, 401k and make it a $100,000 uh, 401k. Because then the offer's no good. Then the offer's no good, and the $404 for 60 months makes a whole lot more sense. Absolutely. Good if point. I can't put them into a Chapter 7, which I would try really hard to do in the first <laughs> If the taxes were, to, if they met the 240 day rule and everything the three else. Three years, two years, 240 day rule. The right. big point here is there's all these things in play that need to be analyzed. If you call 1 800 tax save whatever, you think they're going to analyze whether you'd be better off in a Chapter 13 or filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. What they're going to do is they're going to sleeve you for, yeah, a new play, word, for 7500 bucks. They play on your emotions. You need to slow down, meet with people that know all the avenues to save money, and then make the right decision. Remember, it's financial crisis management is preserve future income for you and your family. Jenny, to submit the offer, what do you need to do? we got one minute left. You have to fill out the Form 656, 433A for the offer and compromise. You pay a $150 processing fee, plus they require that you pay 20% of the amount that you are proposing to offer. And then there's some other financial information that needs to be attached as well. If they reject so, your offer, do you get your money back? No, you don't. It applies towards the taxes that you owe, except the $150 is a processing fee. Another good reason to make sure before you submit the offer, you know it's one that you can get approved get and then you can afford to meet and come up with the balance of the money that you owe. Summary, how to resolve tax problems. If you have unfiled returns, you have to file them. It's not that big of a deal. If you don't know the numbers, you do the best you can to get the numbers, and there's information we can obtain from the government to help supplement that. If you owe taxes, you need to know your options. Options include installment agreements. There are three types. You have currently not collectible in play. You have collection due process hearing. You have an offer and compromise opportunity. You have a Chapter 13 bankruptcy that may work. And you have a Chapter 7 bankruptcy that may work to resolve the tax problems. You could also always move to Guam. You Guam. can move to Guam. Or like I said at the beginning of the show, you can go to Russia and, and, and have lunch with Snowden. There you go. <laughs> which I think the president would. And then the president won't come and talk to Putin if you do that. He also won't talk to you. Final uh, thoughts with regard to tax problems. I'm still upset about this idea that people are going to start getting these letters saying, you know, we've looked at your credit card uh, receipts and we think you're unreporting your cash income. Final thoughts as to tax problems. Don't make tax problems your problem. Address them immediately. You don't have to pay just because you owe. But you better file your taxes because Leavenworth is not your style. <laughs> There's no reason to put yourself under that level of anxiety. Most of my clients, after they've met with me, say, gee, I wish I would have done this years ago if I had known it would be this easy to resolve. That, that's the bottom line. All of a sudden, you address the problem, you can sleep. Listen, have a great week. Thanks. Appreciate our sponsors. Thanks for listening and watching the Financial Crisis Talk Center. We will be back next week.